So in this video, we will be improving our previously made project called as Smart Pod by providing its new feature and some improvements in it. Now, for those who don't know what Smart Pod project actually is, then it is a plant health monitoring based project in which we can you know monitor the parameters of the plant like the soil moisture value, like the light value, the temperature value, and after processing all the data, we were displaying it in an emoji form onto the display. So with this project, we were able to visualize how the plant is actually feeling, whether it is feeling thirsty whether it is feeling cold or whether the plant is feeling happy okay so that project has some of the flaws in the sensors like it was using the resistive soil moisture sensor which has less sensitivity and then in the long term it also get corroded like the legs of the soil moisture get corroded and we are not able to get the accurate readings secondly it was not connected to internet so we are only able to visualize how the plant is feeling when we are in the front of the plant but if we are in office or if we are in some other room we are not able to see how the plant is actually feeling and the third is it was using the uh, traditional LDR sensor for monitoring the light value which is not the ideal choice for sensing the light okay so we came up with the smart pot 2.0 which solved all these problems and also it got some new and unique features which makes it more smarter than before and this project was made using the TT go high grow module which is the all-in-one uh, sensor model based on the ESP32 board okay so in this video I'm gonna show you how to use this sensor to monitor all the parameters of the plant and how to display it onto the new blink 2.0 platform how to get the notification using the blink 2.0 platform and you'll also be learning about how to display those emojis onto the same blink platform so you're gonna learn a lot of new things out of the smart pot 2.0 so before starting this video if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel as we come up with these and many other interesting projects in the field of IoT automation and electronics that being said Let's start with this video. Before starting the video, let me tell you one really interesting and useful feature of our sponsor LTM which is a PCB designer based software company and that feature is called as design review. Using LTM, you can add any member to your project and after that, they can highlight any fault in the schematic or can report availability of components in the inventory on the PCB to your designer so that they can visualize this component and can work upon it to provide a smooth flow of PCB production even if they both are in any corner of the world. So that's the design review feature and even you can try out this and many other features of LTM for free by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description as you'll be getting an access to free trial version using that link. Now let's start with our video. So now let's first discuss how this single module solves all the previous problem. Well, starting with it's a soil moisture sensor, then it got the capacitive soil moisture sensor in it, which is more sensitive as compared to the resistive one. And secondly, it is corrosion free, so it won't get corroded uh, unlike that uh, resistive soil moisture sensor. So that problem is solved by the capacitive soil moisture sensor. Second thing is it got built in ESP32, so we can directly program it to talk to the Blink Cloud platform and getting all the notifications and sending the data everything you can do with that particular thing and thirdly it got built in lux sensor that means it has a dedicated light sensor in it so unlike that ldr sensor so we will be getting the much accurate light readings out of this particular sensor okay so this is how it will solve all the problems and it got some unique features as well like it has the salt sensor as well so we'll be able to uh, you know recognize whether the plant needs some salt or it has the adequate amount of salt or not so everything will be recognized by this salt sensor and it also has a battery connector and a battery charge circuit built in with a much smaller form factor as compared to our previous project so it it is kind of a perfect sensor for all the smart plant related project as well as smart gardening related projects so i will definitely recommend this to you and if you want to understand this particular sensor model in detail well i have made a dedicated video out of it whose link you can find easily in the i button or in the description of this video so after talking about how it solves the problem now let us uh, jump onto our computer and let's see how we'll be making our smart pot 2.0 using this module so first let's start with configuring the blink account for that you need to go to blink.cloud website which will take you to this page you have to log into your blink account and after that we'll be clicking on to this templates as we'll be creating a new template we'll give this template a name i'll name it as smart pot 2 
hardware will be SP32 and connection type is Wi-Fi. I'll click on the done button. Okay. So this is our template. Now we'll go to data streams and here in the data stream, we'll be adding all the uh, virtual pins you can say. So I'll click on the data stream button, click on virtual pin and here I'll add the first virtual pin which is temperature which will be attached to the virtual pin V0 and its minimum value is 0 and maximum value is 100. Okay, so 0 to 100 temperature it will show. I'll click on the create button and similarly I'll add different different data streams at uh, different different virtual pins for this particular project quickly. Okay, so I added all the different different data stream for temperature, humidity, light, soil moisture, salt, advice, battery and the seventh one is for the emoji. Now this uh, data stream is specifically to show the emoji based upon, you know, comparing the data of all the other parameters. Okay, I will, you know, talk more about emoji while we'll be configuring the application and understanding the coding part. Okay, so yeah, after that we'll be going to the events part. Now why event? Well, as I said, in this project, we have added a feature called as receiving notifications. So as soon as the soil moisture maybe goes down by a particular limit, we may, we will be getting a notification. As soon as the temperature exceeds one particular limit, it will be uh, we will be getting a notification. So how will be getting a notification? Well, for that we need to configure the event. So I'll here I'll click on Add New Event and we need to create uh, create event for all different conditions. For example, I'll be creating the first event called as Low Moisture. Now it is kind of a warning, and the warning will display the message as uh, I am feeling thirsty please give me some water okay so this kind of notification will pop up onto our smartphone and that want me to write here i'll tick mark all this uh, options and in the notification i'll click on enable notifications and here are the three options by which you'll be getting the notification via email push notification and sms i'll be selecting email to the uh, device owner that means my you know smartphone on which i'm logged in with so i will just getting a notification from the blink application now you need to select the time period like after what interval or how many interval you want to receive the notification or the next notification so i'll select the time as five minutes after every five minutes if the condition is still active i'll be getting the notification it will not send me the notification continuously it'll be setting sending me after five minutes click on the enable button and just click on the create button this will create a event called as low moisture which will be sending a warning that uh, i am feeling thirsty please give me some water now how to trigger this event or how to actually send the notification well that is something that to be covered in the coding part okay but here we need to declare this kind of notification so similarly i'll create two more notification one for high temperature one for low temperature let me just create it out Okay, so I successfully created two more notification or events. We can say one for high temperature, another for low temperature. Well, that's it. That is all we need to do inside this template part. After that, you can click on the save template button. It will be automatically saving this template. Okay, now we need to create a project. So right now, as you can see, we are getting the template ID and the device name, but we are not getting the authentication token and authentication token is something that you have to enter into the code as well. So to get the authentication token, you need to create a device for that. Click on this icon, click on new device and click on from template and here just choose the template that we have created smart pot to click on the create button as you can see we also got the authentication token so now we are ready to go inside the code part okay so yeah here is the code i have used for this smart pot 2.0 and i will quickly guide you through what are the major changes that you need to do to make this code work on your side as well okay so first of all we need to provide the template id which you can get it from here pretty simple so i'll simply copy it and I'll paste that here. Okay. After that, you also need to have the authentication token here. So I'll copy the authentication token, which I got on the dashboard. I'll copy it and I'll paste it here. Pretty common. So this, the, are the man, uh, these two are the mandatory, uh, you know, tokens you need to add. Now here, as you can see, we are not using the Wi-Fi provisioning because all the files are not open. We have only one single file here inside the code. Uh, it's just because we are providing the Wi-Fi credentials hard coded inside the code itself okay so this will make our code much much simpler so earlier we have used the blink 2.0 codes and it were too complex because there were a couple of more features added to it like ota and wi-fi provisioning stuff like that this don't have all those features and hence it's a 
simpler code so here to provide the same name and password of your wi-fi router to make it talk to internet as well after that here i have provided couple of minimum and maximum we can say threshold values uh, based on which will be receiving the notification for example here the soil maximum soil minimum values are mentioned now how you will be getting these values well you need to get, uh, dip this soil moisture sensors straight inside the water to get the maximum value and you have to remove the sensor out from the water to get the minimum value and to write those values here after that here you can change the values according to your need here i have put the night threshold value as 5 so as soon as the light value goes below 5 the plant will go into the sleep mode similarly the low moisture threshold is 15 high is 95 High temperature threshold is 45 degrees Celsius and low temperature threshold is 15 degrees Celsius. You can change it according to the type of plant you are using. Great. Now, how where you will be using this, I'll let you know in the code. Okay. Straight after that, uh, we'll are reading the data here inside the send data function. We are reading the data and we are also sending the data to the particular virtual plane. Now, the con the syntax is exactly the same that we are using in the previous generation of the Blink. Okay. Like Blink dot virtual write, then to write the pin number that is V2 and the variable. Uh, A variable name whose data we want to send. So V2 is for light reading, V3 is for soil moisture reading. Then we are reading the salt value, and we are sending the string, like the advice string, as a salt value. Whether uh, the salt is too high, is it optimal, is it low, or is it needed? This kind of data will be sending to the Blink app on the virtual pin V4. Then sending the temperature, sending the humidity, sending the battery value as well. And here comes the a uh, no tricky part you can say which is sending the emoji so here what we are doing is we are using all those threshold values that we have discussed earlier and based on the uh, current status current value of the sensor we are sending the particular emoji for example if the light value is less than the night light threshold we are sending the data one to the virtual pin v6 which reveals that the plant is feeling sleepy now one question arises that we are not sending the emoji we are just sending the integer data one then how this one is actually shown as a emoji onto the blink app well that is something that need to be covered while explaining the uh, blink mobile application setup so i'll explain it to you but as of now what we are doing is as soon as if it is feeling sleepy we are sending one if it is feeling low moisture or feeling thirsty we are sending two and similarly we are sending all the integer numbers based on different different feelings and how we are getting the feelings by just comparing the threshold value okay so that's how the code is actually working other than that uh, all the lines of code is just to fetch the sensor data and storing into variables and stuff like that it's pretty much straight forward so now what i'll do i'll quickly select the right board which is esp dev module right com port which is this and then i'll straight away hit the upload button and in the meantime let us configure our blink mobile application Okay, so now let's just configure our Blink uh, mobile dashboard. For that, I'll open up the new Blink application, and here, as you can see, the Smart Pot 2 device already appeared here because we already created it on the web dashboard. So I'll click on it, and here I'll click on this icon to configure it. And here we can add the widgets by just tapping on the screen. Here are all the widgets that we can use. So right now, I'll be using uh, the Gauge widget. Okay, I'll tap on it to configure it. Then I'll select the data stream as temperature. You can give it a name. I'll name it as temperature only. Click on the back button, and we successfully created our first widget, which is the temperature. And similarly, I'll be adding all other widgets for all other parameters. So right now I have added four widget for temperature, humidity, light, and moisture respectively. And now I'll add a special widget called as the image gallery for showing the emoji. Now this widget is only available for the you know paid subscription of the Blink platform. But uh, don't worry if you don't have, then also you'll be able to visualize all these parameters because these are the free widgets. But in case you want to make this project uh, to look a bit attractive by having the emojis, so you can you know go for the paid version and use this widget called as image gallery. So I'll maximize this. Okay, using this widget, we'll be able to showcase the emojis. For that, just tap on the uh, widget to configure it. Select the data stream as uh, emoji, that is the V6, and here we can add the images that we want to display. So just click on Add Image, and here we need to provide the URL of the images. Now, for that, what you can do is you can go to your web browser, and here just search for the emoji that you want to display. Let's just search for Happy Emoji as of now. 
okay so go into the images section and just select the emoji that you like the most i'll go with the first one i'll long press on it and click on open image on a new tab so it will be automatically opening it in a new tab i'll simply copy its url from here i'll go back to the blink platform and directly paste that url here and as you can see this emoji appeared here so this will be shown onto the blink platform i'll just click on the add image button and that's it so what this uh, widget will do in case this widget that means the virtual pin v6 which is the emoji one is getting the data as zero it will be showing as the happy emoji onto the you know uh, widget as you can see this kind of uh, emoji will be able to see in case we are getting the data zero similarly we can add different different uh, images and accordingly the number will be added so uh, it will be showing the a particular image based on the particular number that we are receiving. So let me just quickly add all the other emojis for all the different expressions. Okay, so I successfully added all the emojis based upon different different expressions. Now I'll go back to the main page and here I'll add more widget uh, for battery status and we can say salt monitoring, uh, salt status you can say. For battery I'll be using this level emoji. Okay, so here is that level emoji. I'll tap on it. I'll select the data stream and I'll select the battery here. Okay, I'll select and type the name as a battery here. Great. Okay, and for that uh, salt status, I'll be using the LCD display. I'll tap on it and I'll select the data stream as salt. Okay, yeah. Okay, so with this, we have successfully configured our Blink mobile dashboard for showing all the different widgets and uh, emojis and everything. And now we are left with, you know, seeing this particular project in action. And let's say, are we able to see the particular expression based upon the particular condition or not? Let's have a look. Now before moving to the testing part, let me tell you that we also got a 3D printed case for this sensor whose design we got from the official GitHub page of Lilygo. I'll leave its link down in the description so even you can get your own 3D printed case for the sensor. So after assembling the sensor and the case, our module looks something like this. It seems like a small sword or a knife but yeah, it serves the purpose. We got the hole for the USB and on the top, we made a separate hole for the light sensor. So that was all about the configuration. Now let's just test it out. So here I'll first power up the board via USB and put it inside the pot. On the phone, as you can see, we got all the sensors reading immediately. And also, as all the parameters are according to the need of the plan, it also showing us the happy emoji on the phone. Let's try removing the sensor and see if we are getting some notifications or not. As you can see, we got the notification immediately and also the emoji changed to the thirsty emoji that means it needs some water. And similarly, we can get all other notifications based on the conditions that we have programmed it for. And also it will change the emoji on the Blink mobile app so that we can visualize how the plant is failing from any corner of the world. So that's the SmartPod 2.0 with a lot of improvements and a lot of features in it. I hope you liked it and got to learn something new from it. Well, if it is so, do click the like button and just tell YouTube algorithm that this YouTube video is worth watching. And do let me know in the comments if you feel I should do some improvements and upgrades in this project. Well, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.